10, 9, ignition sequence starts. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff, 32 minutes past the hour, liftoff on Apollo 11. Imagine that you're on a trip to distant planet. So you're in a spacecraft, and you have to figure out how to feed yourself and your, the rest of your crew. One idea is to take a packet of seeds that can grow using elements of the air, water, and energy, and that can grow really fast in a matter of hours. It's a way of making food that doesn't require any arable land whatsoever. You can grow food anywhere, anytime, rain or shine, day or night. Being a scientist, thinking about climate science is why I do many of the things that I do. I was one of the many people who went to New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina hit. My mother's family is from Louisiana, so I went to Louisiana a lot as a kid. Very fond memories, but going back to Louisiana in 2005 was a very different story. And just seeing the devastation that this weather event created, that had a huge impact. That got me interested in trying to be a part of the solution. We really looked at the biggest problem and the biggest opportunity, which is alternative meat, replacements for beef, chicken, pork, et cetera. And we asked the question, we said, if we can solve this, if we can make something like a meat alternative that tastes good, then we can you know, solve many problems. And we need to do it in a way that uses much less land, that does not lead to deforestation, that doesn't emit as much of this greenhouse gas emissions that we have. NASA started working on the technical piece, but didn't finish. And that's what takes the longest, is figuring out the science, doing all the, the research, the studies, the, um, the scale-up work. Well, this is very exciting. <laughs> it's for our air protein beef to yeah. be infused with Mexican flavors. It's easy to flavor. It can be pushed into barbecues, into pork uh, dish. We're making food in a whole new way. Food that is highly nutritious. Our initial protein ingredients have 80% protein content with all of the essential amino acids and rich in vitamins and minerals. What did you think when I first asked you that, you know, if we can make meat from air? I first thought of the structure, the texture of meat, how it feels like when you bite into it, how it tastes, the smell and then how do I create that in the lab? Taking the powder that we have, the ingredient that we made from air, and putting that into these various forms so that when we eat it, it feels like meat. It tastes like meat. Yeah, there Just you dive go. right on in. Okay. <laughs> One bite. There was an element of magic. There was an element of science. There's an element of uh, mystery and history. Um, that we all put in. The texture. The texture of the protein is really nice. Yeah. Perfect for meat taco coming from a Mexican. Our process is a new type of fermentation. And fermentation makes beer, makes wine, makes yogurt, makes cheese. And now it makes air protein and it will make more things. So if you're dealing with yogurt, your agricultural input is milk. Same with cheese. In our case, what we actually feed it the elements that make up those inputs. So milk is made up of carbon, oxygen, hydrogen. We feed it those elements. So here we have where it all begins. These serve as cultures um, to, to grow out uh, larger lots of material uh, that which we can then refine and purify to produce 
uh, protein rich ingredients. And it really comes down to, you know, this culture being the start of the process, going through multiple refining steps. Just so that I understand, in these little beakers are the microbes to which you add hydrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and you mix it all around and you can make pasta or meat or bread, is that? In a nutshell, that's, that's it. All right, yeah, so now we're gonna transfer our cultures to uh, a controlled growth environment to propagate this culture. So how long will they stay in there? Anywhere from 24 to 72 hours, depending on the culture. And at that time, they're um, ready to go into a larger reactor. I have to tell you that I'm super excited. I haven't way. tasted the air protein bread yet. I love the way it looks. We're continuously fine tuning and refining recipes because that's what you have to do. You have your ingredient, now you have to mix it with other ingredients and get your final recipes. So that's an ongoing process. Okay. Air protein. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> it's very good. Thank you. Everyone loves food. I love food and it's a very applicable, relatable science. I've always been interested in food and I've also been interested in kind of all aspects of science, chemistry, microbiology, engineering. I was watching like a Domino's commercial actually about a new sauce that they were unveiling and was like, who does that? So Googled, Googled food science quite literally and discovered it's a field. Most, most of it is chemistry, yeah. Doing food science that has like a larger purpose is interesting to me. So I'm gonna make air protein egg. This is air protein. I'm gonna put the water in now. Air protein egg is similar in, with egg in pasta because it has the emulsification properties and also like water holding and binding. So it, it helps the dough come together pretty, pretty nicely. Let me gonna ask you. So I'm going to measure the firmness of the pasta. I'm going to lay down the pasta right here. We want to be consistent and we want, for, we want the pasta to hold up during boiling so it doesn't like mush when you eat it. Hey Lisa, I, how are it's you? It's really busy this morning. Yeah, it is, it is. Bring me up to speed, what's happening? They're prepping the, the micronutrients, if you will, that the fermentation requires. So that's being prepped. Uh, basically just final checkouts of all the systems. There's a huge food security benefit to this way of making food. And you can make it in a matter of hours. You don't have to wait for the right season. 96 hours later, your system is fully producing. We stand on the shoulders of the NASA scientists who thought up this idea of making nutrients from elements of the air. We face lots of scientific and engineering challenges. It's not easy, but we're seeing the effects of climate change now, and the need to act is only getting more important and more urgent.